It's the second visit by anyone from Australia to China since the pandemic hit in 2020. So that's quite significant. There's another trade mission going on as well. It's the first by an Australian head of government of one of the states. So I think that's significant. And uh, I mean, obviously like all Australian states, Victoria has seen great commercial benefits from engaging with China. It's about making sure that we have as many students choosing to come to Melbourne as possible. The Chinese story is absolutely central to the Victorian story for more than 150 years. You can't imagine a modern Victoria without the Chinese influence. Uh, I think in, in, in some ways for um, the average Chinese person, an education in Australia, including in Victoria, is quite a great opportunity for future immigration, perhaps permanent residency. Also being able to pick up a lot of uh, soft skills and uh, things like emotional intelligence and flexibility that you don't always get in the very rigorous long hours of a Chinese education. Well, you won't be surprised that I, I, I disagree uh, with what the Premier said. I mean, I think if these things are uh, stated carefully, um, and I'm obviously done in consultation with the federal government, that there's no reason why the Premier couldn't be raising Lay's case. I think it's important that her case is raised as consistently uh, and, as, and a, as at a uh, higher level as possible. Um, as much as we can. Foreign I think the problem is, is that Victoria is not a country uh, and so Victoria can't sign treaties, they can't make any diplomatic representations and so Belt and Road was really something that should be done with sovereign states and Victoria is not one. <laughs>